All right. Hello and welcome to this week's Feminine Forecast. I'm doing something a little bit different this week. I am having a heart to heart with my one of my favorites. I'll, I was I might say my favorite, my absolute favorite healer out there, Jessica Alejandro from Four Whole Heart Healing. I always put the four in the wrong spot, but <laughs> she is joining us today to talk about Venus retrograde and the feminine collective shadow and why that makes Venus retrograde so uncomfortable. And I'm really excited for this conversation. Um, and I have asked Jessica to talk about what she does because she does a lot of things and she, you should know that she does them all very well as too. So Jessica, go ahead and share what you do with us. Okay. Thank you so much. I, you are one of my, <laughs> if not my favorite, seriously. Um, you know, our connection is so immense so great and so beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much for having me. So I am a psychotherapist by trade. So I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And as and I have a private practice. And as my private practice has grown and evolved, I've noticed that I'm also a, a person who helps light workers emerge or empaths and highly sensitive people who don't know that they're highly sensitive or empaths. I help them you know, recognize who they are. Um, so that's in the psychotherapy realm, right? Um, along with, you know, helping people with their trauma and that kind of stuff. But then um, as that's evolved, spiritually, I've also evolved and I'm a shamanic Reiki master teacher. I also, I'm also a crystal dreaming teacher, which is a modality that helps you kind of journey shamanically in a crystal mandala. Mm -hmm. um, and I also do sound healing. So those are the, the those are the things that I've honed in on because as you know when you're going through your spiritual journey you're like oh I want this and I want that and I <laughs> so I've kind of uh, you know settled on those things because they're close and dear to my heart and they've helped a lot of my clients heal. Absolutely and do I remember seeing that you're one of four people who can do the crystal dreaming? In the yeah, I'm States. one of the. I'm one of four teachers trained in the United States because it originally came from Australia. So Ray Richards uh -huh. in Australia was the one that got the download for this this uh, mm -hmm. healing modality. And my teacher, uh, Jude Smith, she's in Rhinebeck, New York, and she was the only one for many years uh, trained to teach. And now there's three more of us um, in Miami wow. in Chicago and then in Connecticut where I live. So. So that's amazing. For those of you who have your interest piqued by Jessica and her work, those links are going to be down in the video description or down in the show notes because it will also be available as a podcast. So exciting. Um, all right. So just two more questions for you. What is feeling really good, like really just aligned for you in your mission right now or in your business right now? Knowing you know what feels really good knowing that I, this is my purpose like knowing that i've landed in my purpose and that it's it's shown itself right so we're always like what is my purpose when we start this journey yes. what is my purpose what is my purpose and to an extent <laughs> because it hasn't been perfect i've allowed it to reveal itself and it did it revealed itself in my clients and i'm like oh okay so this is what i'm supposed to do about 90 percent of my clients are empaths and they don't know it they come with a, a you know, host of anxiety and depression. Um, and when I niched my practice down to just anxiety and depression, then I was able to see it. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this is, so it feels really good that I'm helping people emerge, you know, so I'm helping people find their journey, whatever that looks like. It doesn't have to look like mine. It doesn't have to look like yours, but yeah. allowing them to know that they have the tools inside and that they're not crazy. Like the world wants to make them think they are. Mm. I love that. <laughs> I actually have goosebumps now. Yeah. Letting your purpose, it's almost like letting your purpose find you is, is just the way to go about it. Cause I know, like you were saying, I know for in the beginning, I was kind of on this quest. And then when I stopped the quest, when I said, just find me, that's when it all started to come together. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then my final question before we get into Venus retrograde and all that good stuff, all that stuff. Do we want to call it good? I think, well, yeah, we all do. Relative. <laughs> um, what season are you in, in regards to your mission and your business right now? So I'm kind of in a split season right now. <laughs> it feels <Okay>. like spring. <laughs> it feels like spring and summer. I feel like last oh, year, nice. last year I was in in winter for most of the time you know just mm -hmm. kind of like and being upset because i wasn't really motivated but as you know even when you're not doing you're doing right there's right. things that are going on in, in the head and creations that are happening they're just not ready to emerge yet so 
Um, nice. or like we were talking a little bit before we started, uh, I've, I've started planning my 2022 year because it feels really robust for some reason. I don't, I don't know mm. what the reason <laughs> is, but it just feels like, um, I mean, you know, the card spread, the, that pile two that you did the other day also kind of reaffirmed that, you know, <laughs> yeah. that pile two. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, um, it just feels like things are going to really happen and really bloom. Um, so I'd mm. say I'm kind of really, really heavy in my spring, just kind of creating and doing and really starting to walk into summer hopefully we'll see because sometimes it goes back to winter so we'll see what happens well it also sounds like there's a whole lot of trust happening that you're doing the creation and the doing and as a result of being so in alignment that the universe will will meet you and collaborate with you on all of that so that's really exciting i'm on a cusp a seasonal cusp as well every time i think i'm about to march out of winter they're like no head back in (laughs) stay cozy for a little while (laughs) which I have like learned to just absolutely treasure and love so I don't know how hard I'm working to get out of winter right now I'm kind of like you want me to stay here that's all good yeah (laughs) um okay so let's get into the heart of what we're talking about today which is Venus retrograde I knew I wanted to do something different for the retrograde season especially with Venus because it's always hit me quite hard I've never walked in with the level of awareness that I now have. So if you're new to astrology or Venus retrograde, retrogrades in general are a time for us to go within, to kind of hit pause, to take the big time out, maybe to go into winter and explore the themes of the planet. Excuse me. I'm still dealing with a little tickle in my throat, guys. So When Venus goes retrograde, it's an opportunity for us to really dive into our relationships, our dynamics, and our connections. But Venus is the feminine energy in the sky. So she has a profound impact on all of us that are here working through some of our feminine stuff, our feminine-ish, we'll say. Um, But in addition, it governs beauty, pleasure, the things that we like and how we engage with the things that we dislike and how we receive love and receiving love. Let's take it big, not just romantic love, but love from source energy and love from ourselves. What's so powerful about this conversation we're going to have, especially that we're having it with Jessica is because Venus retrograde is happening in the sign of Capricorn. And Jessica is absolutely my favorite Capricorn on the planet. (laughs) Okay, so Capricorn has this very karmic type energy. It is governed by the planet Saturn, who is the uh, karmic father in the sky. Um, But I always describe Capricorn as very driven, very motivated, very work focused. Um, And what was really coming through in my channel is that this Venus retrograde is an opportunity for us to slow down so that we can start to speed up. Okay, Um, so like I mentioned earlier, Jessica and I are going to just chat a little bit about how Venus retrograde is going to impact the feminine shadow, the collective shadow. So we all deal with that within ourselves, but it's going to have a huge impact on the future of the planet and of for lightworkers everywhere, which is everyone. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this conversation started. I am so excited to talk and hear what you have to say. So go ahead, Jessica. (laughs) Well, you know, it's just all of those words, right? The words that you were using, um, desire and sensuality and the things that we um, often, so often as women um, are told to deny, right? From the beginning, from as when you're a little girl, you know, you're, you're told be a good girl, um, make sure that you are respectable, don't wear things that are going to make men look at you in a certain way. You know, so very early on, we get these messages that we are not or should not um, really uh, Im- immerse ourselves into our complete feminine, right? Because Mm -hmm. feminine is not just nurturing and motherly and kind and, you know, caring and all those things. It's also sensual and sexual and, and fiery. And, you know, Mm -hmm. so we get into this space where it, you know, behind closed doors, we can do these things, but it's still a little shameful secret. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, and it, it doesn't. So then when Venus comes into retrograde then that all those things start to emerge like i've definitely noticed i know venus 
doesn't retrograde doesn't start until the 19th but as you know energies tend to move yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know so i've noticed myself really like i'm on this kind of weight loss journey and trying to you know for my health not necessarily for my body before mm -hmm. i used to do it for more of that yeah. but now it's for my health but i've noticed that with that i've also allowed my energy and I don't know if it's the retrograde but uh, allowed it to just allow my sensuality and sexuality to be part of me again you know mm -hmm. um throughout my life I remember when I was on vacation one year okay I was flirting with the guy's 17 year old son but I didn't know the kid was 17 I mean he was a big kid he looked <laughs> like he was about 21 um and the father jokingly you know we were in Jamaica um at a resort and the father jokingly like by the pool he's like you're a man eater and I'm like what i'm a man eater and that was the first time i had ever been called that but i i examined that and i was like you know what it, it it's not a bad thing right you know i don't know if you know um if you're familiar with lisa lister like mm -hmm. her, she, she, wrote, talked, she wrote um, code red right code red yep and love your lady landscape mm -hmm. and she talks about the word i'm gonna say it the word cunt right say it <laughs> And she talks about this word being an empowerment word and not a shameful word. But, you know, in our society, especially men will use that word to to dehumanize or to, mm -hmm. you know, to um, make you feel less than. She was like, call me a cunt, call me a bitch, call me whatever you want, because that is empowering. Now what you're doing is you are um, highlighting the feminine and that's mm -hmm. okay. You know, that doesn't have to be a derogatory term. Bitch yeah. doesn't have to be a derogatory term, mm -hmm. but we have allowed it to be. Now, if mm -hmm. we as women collectively, right, if we say, fine, that's what I am, that word won't have any more impact. And then right. we don't have to feel so ashamed of our lady parts our body, mm -hmm. our sensuality. And then when uh, Venus goes into retrograde, we can be in all of our femininity and not feel, not have it feel so hard or so shameful or so mm -hmm. um, heavy, you know, because I think that's what this feels like for us because then we have to look at those parts of us mm -hmm. that have been deemed shadow parts or shameful parts. Mm -hmm. um, but it's for a reason because it's right. part of our whole and especially as the divine feminine it needs to be able to manifest we need to be able to make that normal and okay um right for ourselves well, and, and even when you were talking about like the motherly like this motherly energy of the feminine like i was just thinking i can be motherly and nurturing to my daughter but i can also be a total mama bear and I know there's been times when I've had to be more assertive for her and I've had to be more of like channeling the Kali Ma, like nobody, oh, like yeah. nobody puts my baby in a corner, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, um, and how I've always had this like hesitation before doing so because yeah. one, like we've, you know, it's okay to be the mother Mary, whereas, right. and in fact, that's, that's our place, right? Yes. Whether we have kids or not, like as the feminine, it's like, be the mother Mary, right? The Kalima, we, we show up with her energy and there's, for, for me, I'll speak because I don't think it's true for everybody, but I show up with that just slight hesitation. Like, what are people going to think if I tell them actually, no, that's my daughter and you will not be singling her out for, you know, whatever right. reason. Right. But yeah. So that's what that was really making me think of that. We all have, um, that we all have those those points where we're just slightly hesitant to be in our full, raw, feminine That's right. Power. That's right. And I'm glad that you brought that part up because, you know, I'm talking about this, the sensual part, but also the the assertive part, you know, the bitch mm -hmm. part, the, the, what, yeah. what society will see as the, the cunt or the bitch. And right. it's like, um, but why? You know, if I'm defending mine or if I'm defending myself or if I'm standing up for someone else, why is that seen as a negative thing? Well, because it scares the living daylights out of the patriarchy, right? Because if women right. if women collectively rise up, if we say enough is enough as as 
has been happening, mm -hmm. it gets very scary for the way that the, the, the power shift, right? The power mm -hmm. is going to shift and it is shifting um, slowly but surely, but it, it is going to completely change humanity and the people that are in power now are not going to have as much power, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty scary for, for the, the full divine feminine to emerge, but that's mm -hmm. exactly what's happening. Um, it needs to happen more because I think also as women we tend to you know turn against each other um yes. we are our own worst enemies you know yeah. um and we can be worse to each other than men can be to us seriously <laughs> oh yeah well and i think you know for lifetimes the patriarchy has really fed into that you know like i know like there's so much out there about the witch wound but i feel like there's like this kind of um offshoot of it which is the bitch wound like yes. we're afraid to really be that assertive and confident because right. then we are seen as bitches and who you know I I file um eh, do I want to yeah like on my own journey I feel like women have called me a bitch more than men have ever oh for sure for you sure know? yeah yeah. And don't even dare to have a bitchy resting face because then it's like nobody wants to approach you. Nobody wants to be your friend. I usually hone in like when I'm in a new situation with new people, I usually hone into the person with the bitchy resting face because I know they're the ones with the depth in their soul. Like I know that they are protecting themselves in some way. And I'm curious about that person, you know, because I mean, yeah. I always pretty much have a smile on my face and I'm, you know, try to be as I try to like gather people as much as I possibly can, but I always focus in on that person and try to try to make friends with that person because mm -hmm. there's something there that they're protecting and there there's a good depth there, you know? Yeah. Well, and I also think, you know, cause we've talked a couple of times about how you have like a, you have, well, we've all like at times we've talked about it as like, you have a very like a masculine dominant energy. Mm -hmm. And that's like, what's so interesting about us. Cause I feel like I have a very feminine dominant energy, but what I love so much about you is like you, like we've called it masculine, but I really feel even like it's coming up even more now in this conversation that you're just a feminine in her power. And by you being there, okay. you allow not necessarily. Yeah. You encourage other women to be there with you as well which is so needed right now yeah that's that's the goal really it is because you know when i see women especially women that come to me with anxiety and depression that are are empaths most of the time mm -hmm. um and when i see the shift once they find out that oh okay this isn't a bad thing this isn't mm -hmm. too muchness this isn't like too sensitive right because that's what they're told stop being so sensitive especially by their partners stop being mm -hmm. so sensitive stop being this you're too much you're too this and when they say that it's okay when they realize or, or know that it's okay to be that then it is just a beautiful beautiful thing to see you know mm -hmm. um and i mean i really get that from i've gotten that from example from my mom my mom was the epitome of, of a mama bear you know mm -hmm. and those when i think of those moments when she did that at school you know she would go to school and like curse my teacher out for something that they did like you know <laughs> and I'd be there and I'd see it and it, it was such a proud moment for me and it reinforced for me that it's okay I mean in my 20s I will say I took it too far to, <laughs> to the well, other side the journey though right we'll get where, there we'll get right, there. right. <laughs> where everybody got tongue lashings didn't matter everybody got tongue lashings but yeah. you know then once I started to harness it and once I started to you know it was very much toxic, toxic masculine because I had to work through my own stuff, you know, my own mm -hmm. traumas, my own issues, my own daddy issues, all of that stuff, you know, so, but um, it's, it's, it's just something that we need to help each other do, you know, we can't mm -hmm. um, continue to shun or shut each other out and be catty, you know, our claws need to retract and <laughs> we need to just be loving, right? Like you said, the, the, the big love, not just the romantic love, be loving mm -hmm. with each other and inclusive and, and just try to be, um, especially during these times, during Venus retrograde, when everybody's mm -hmm. shadow is starting to emerge um, right. or you're starting to need to look at it. Um, mm -hmm. It's super important to be able to support each other in that. Yeah, and for me personally, because like in reflecting on my own journey, when I was very insecure about myself, I would be super, um, I would be more judgmental about women that were in their power or women that were, you know, showing that oh, yeah. polarity 
And I found that the more that I heal, like, I don't necessarily know that me being in my, I have the, like, I can cut a bitch down if she screws with me. <laughs> like I have that. I don't think that that's my dominant go-to, right. but it's like, um, now I can see a woman who's assertive and competent and totally in her power and have nothing but respect and reverence and, and see how needed it is. Right. So, but I feel like it took a lot of presence within myself to be able to get secure in myself and not be so like, cause even I'm like, why was I even ever triggered by seeing a woman who was confident? And like, even though I know that I'm like, why would I be so bothered by like, what a good thing. Mm -hmm. So for like, and I think that that's going to resonate with a lot of people. And especially cause we're aware women that are catching this and that are watching this. So what would be like the best, if you, let me form this question in my head a little bit. What would be like a really good place for someone to start working on this aspect of their shadow? Let's see. So really, it's just starting to to look at it and starting to love it. This is what I tell people all the time, you know, uh, especially when I do like certain meditations and stuff or when we're going into the body. So, you know, all <laughs> parts are welcomed. That is one of the most important phrases ever. You know, mm -hmm. all parts are welcomed. You posted something the other day about the shadow and it was something like shadow parts aren't bad parts. They're mm -hmm. the parts that that have been shamed or or pushed aside or something like that, right? And Yeah, reje I think it was rejected. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. Rejected by society and then therefore you start to reject them too because you say, "Oh, people don't like this, so I can't show this about myself," right? So cuz mm -hmm. I think people you know, we, because we live in a world of duality, good, bad, you know, black, mm -hmm. white, whatever, people always want to, we want to, we want to put a label on something. So mm -hmm. the shadow, you know, the collective shadow, it's a bad thing. And it's like, no, these were all parts of us that came through, you know, it, through our soul for this human experience that mm -hmm. somebody else said to us, that's bad. You know, when you mm -hmm. look at your shadow, um, when you look at your shadow parts, they're they're good parts of us. They're, now they've been so shamed and they've been so um, shunned and put aside that when they, when they come out, <laughs> they they act bad, you know, quote mm -hmm. unquote bad, because they haven't been paid attention to. And mm -hmm. until we fully emerge and allow these parts of us, we just have to look at them and say, you know what, I love you. Usually mm -hmm. these parts, if we go it like there's a um an, a modality a, a therapy uh, modality called internal family systems which mm -hmm. starts work right so what they have what well, in this in this therapy that we look at all these different parts and usually are what we would call shadow parts are exile parts and exile mm -hmm. parts are very young parts of us that are wounded and hurt and are being protected by all the manager parts which are the ones that are like trying to protect you but that's kind of the ego parts the man yeah. if we're gonna you know the managers mm -hmm. are the ego parts that are saying don't let the the these little kid parts or these little exiles or these little shadows come out because they're too wounded instead mm -hmm. of saying let's heal these parts um right. you know, because they're so wounded and we need to become a collective whole as a system you know mm -hmm. um so it's it's allowing yourself to just look at them you know, mm -hmm. without any judgment, without any, you know, without any of those feelings, just kind of take a look at them, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's really going inward and saying, okay, I want to look at my, you know, I don't know, my angry shadow part. Okay, take a look at it. What does it look like? That's probably a three year old, you know, it's mm -hmm. probably your three year old self that's angry and sad and feeling neglected. So sit with that part of you. Imagine her or him or in your mind's eye and say, what do you need? You know, mm -hmm. what do you need from me? And allow yeah. them to tell you. Yeah, and I think what we also, cause the, um, I don't remember who the quote was, the post that I shared, but what I really loved is like, once we integrate those aspects of ourselves, that's our power, that's, that's right. our creativity. And that's, that's right. where so much potential is held. And I just think I'm, I'm not going to cry. I'm going <laughs> to cry. Um, and mostly I don't want to cry. Like, I'm totally okay crying. If you've ever watched a live with me, I probably cry. But the reason I try to stifle it is because then like, you can't, you can't figure out what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but it's like, if we were all to show up and do this work, mm -hmm. like, you just, like, I can't even put into words what's possible. 
for the planet. Mm -hmm. It is. It's hard work because nobody wants to look at it, you know, and I see it all the time when I have people come like when a client comes to me, I mean, I think my, my psychology today profile is written pretty clearly. You're gonna, ha you're gonna have to address these things. You're gonna have to feel, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that, that work is gonna be done. It's just, it needs to be done. It is so essential. I did it. I'm doing it <laughs> every day because right. it's a never ending thing. Right. Yes. But I did the most major stuff, you know, um, really healing that little girl. Um, she, you know, and it, it's so important because it just helps you be more present with yourself and then be more present with others and be of service, whatever that looks like for you. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, and the other thing that you just said that I think is so important is that, yeah, the work is never done, but like you mentioned, you've done so much. And I know that the more I've done, it gets easier. You it know, does. it's less fumbling in the dark to even yeah. find what my shadow is and more like you find your rhythm, you find your process mm -hmm. and, the universe will still throw you a curveball, right? <laughs> like, oh yeah, a, a few of them sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, all at the same time, yes. right? <laughs> From different directions, but right. you're less thrown, like you're less likely to be um, thrown off by it. Right. Or you just have, you know where to go, you know yep. who to turn to, you know how to get started. Yeah. And I think that the faster people get started, the faster we're going to see this right. whole thing turn around, right? Right, right. Um, yeah, but I was also like when you were talking about the word cunt and I was thinking like that usually means like a woman who is acting like a jerk or acting like a total bitch, but then the same, you know, it means basically the same thing as pussy and people say like, don't be a pussy, meaning like don't be weak. Right. And it's, I don't know why, but like, I felt like I needed to toss that in there. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. It's like, okay, am I, am I too hard or am I which too soft? Like, like yeah, which one is it? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I just felt like I had to come back to that. It was like sitting there earlier and I was like, I need to just throw this in, but it's like, what do you want from, Right. You know, well, I mean, it's like, what do you want from us? And then reminder, you, the only person you got to make happy is yourself. That's right. That's right. At the end of the day. And that's why it's so important to look to <laughs> to, to um, incorporate yourself. Right. So, you mm -hmm. know, we have these fragmented parts of us, you know, and when you start to welcome them all in and become, you know, start to put your mosaic together, mm -hmm. it makes the journey easier. You know, like mm -hmm. you said, curveballs will be thrown, but you'll know where to go. You'll know what mm -hmm. to do, because guess what? Now you have a whole team of yourself, <laughs> of your parts that are aligned and together and are saying, OK, we got this. Like, OK, we mm -hmm. know how to do this. We've dealt with this before. This isn't a big deal. Like, let's let's move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know why we signed up for this, but we know what to right. do. <laughs> right, right, right. Some <laughs> of us do, <laughs> but we're not going to tell you because you'll be upset. Like <laughs> yeah. you signed up for it. Just deal with it and go with it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh man, good times. Good times here on earth. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, I feel you. Awesome. So I'm trying to think if I have any other questions because, you know, a lot of, so this idea of the collective shadow is, I'll say new-ish to me, like being um, plugged into it or being more conscious of it because a lot of my shadow work has been very personal and deep. And when we do that inner work, right? Like when we do it on ourselves, we are doing it for the greater whole. Oh yeah. Um, but like, where do you, like, so we, and we chatted a little bit about it, but where do you see like what's possible for us if we all start to do this work, if we all start to really go within and tap into our shadowy feminine bits, and just let them shine, right? Like we're keeping them in the dark, let them out, let them shine. What, like, what do you see as possible or what would you like to see happen? Yeah. You know and what I, I got? My final question. I, did, I got goosebumps and I got a mental picture of everybody walking around. I don't know if everybody's seen Twilight, but everybody walking around like the Twilight <laughs> vampires, like the shimmery, like just a shimmery. <laughs> Oh God, it's the corniest thing ever, but it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's good teenage silliness, but, mm -hmm. um, so Twilight vampires, so the way, you know, these vampires shine when they, when the sun shines on them, you know, mm -hmm. they don't melt, but they sparkle, right? So I see people like sparkling, like, can you mm -hmm. imagine everybody walking around doing their work? 
at different levels, right? Because nobody, not everybody's not going to be in the same path at the same time. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that, that would be crazy. Be, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got gotcha. you. Very crazy. Intense. Intense is the word. <laughs> yes, super intense. But you know, I could, I could see. I don't know. I see this, this kind of utopia. You know, this world of not perfection because there's no such thing. Right. But a world of like people walking by each other and smiling. And just being pleasant, right? Not needing mm-hmm. to worry about anybody else, not scowling, just being being happy, being at peace, um, you know, being more inclusive of everything mm-hmm. and not judging anyone. Like, mm-hmm. who cares what they want to do in their life? Like, right. just let them do it. it. They're the ones that have to deal with consequences if there are any. Like, I, I can, I, the earth regenerating and being so beautiful and so you know I mean it it already is but being even more abundant even more beautiful like really I could see plants you know emerging like things that haven't emerged in such a long time because they're like we're not emerging you guys are crazy like you know (laughs) so it just I I don't know I it, it may sound really corny but that's that's what I feel in my heart and that's what I see and just everybody being calm and and in a space of love and a vi- love vibration you know mm-hmm. at different levels you know but right. still not with so much hate and division the way that the world is right now well yeah and i think you know when you're talking about like everybody at different levels i think for the spiritual community i think we still have a, quite a bit of work yeah. or for as like spiritual leaders and healers and guides and teachers or whatever label we want to put on it and i know that i had to do a lot of um tapping into this because it's a part of my shadow where I'm like everybody just get your shit together do your healing work and let's ascend because I'm tired right it's not that hard (laughs) like hustle let's do this yeah but I've had to like you know I think that as this like embracing all of those different levels so now when I come in in contact with a sleeper soul or someone who is just beginning it's kind of exciting to me because one, I'm getting a picture of, or a visual of what I used to be like, like I used to be fast asleep, like, Oh yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, but also like seeing that that's a part of it. Like that's, a. if you've chose, if you are, have awakened sooner or earlier than another, that's part of your path and to bring them with you yeah, to love them where they are. And, you know, to love the sleeper souls, to love the people who are like still fully plugged in. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, and that's, that's kind of what I sense for everybody and just people not being in such a rush. Yeah. Me not being in such a rush to ascend. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Um, right. And patience. Right. Because, I mean, it, it's so funny. I was just talking to I don't know. I say this all the time. I say this maybe three or t- three or four times a day. Patience is a virtue. I say it partly for myself. I say it for to my clients because really that's what they're learning is patience, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I said whoever I was. I'm like, sorry, dear, your timing is not divine timing. And unfortunately, divine timing sometimes sucks. But it is yeah. what it is. Like, just because you want it in this moment doesn't mean you're going to get it. And that's right. the patience piece, you know, right. and I. Yeah, well, and it also, like, as you're saying that message for me, like, patience, a lot of times, like, if you were to get exactly what you want, when you want it, would you be ready for it? Like, would you be willing to accept it? And this came up huge for the feminine over the past couple of weeks where, like, the miracles, the blessings, the abundance, all that hard work paying off. And like, there have been times when like things have been coming in and I've been ready to shut it out just because receiving Venus retrograde, thank you. Um, Receiving can be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So just Um, very interesting that you bring that up. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought that up because that's another big piece about Venus in retrograde, right? Is allowing ourselves to receive. It feels so uncomfortable, especially for, you know, highly sensitive empaths, whatever, you know, because we're always giving. It's always Mm -hmm. giving, 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 and that feels good. And that, but you have to allow yourself to receive, you know, Mm -hmm. from yourself, number one, (laughs) and from others, you know? Well, and to that point, like as, like as feminine, not even just feminine, but as healers, because there's going to, I think there's going to be some, we'll just like say healers and light workers in general can struggle to receive. Mm -hmm. And I know at certain points, even on my own journey, as well as messages, 
when I say it's like, you've got to allow, you've got to receive and we freeze. We're like, Mm -hmm. how does one do that? (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And then that's why it's hard to call things in too, because it's like, like you said, you're calling it in and it's here, but then you're doing this because you're like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. (laughs) Yeah. Or just like the discomfort of like the, um, the shift in the energy exchange where when you're so comfortable putting out, like putting it out there and not getting back. Mm -hmm. But I also question at times for the feminine how often we're putting it out there and then we're saying we're not getting anything back. But oftentimes I think it's merely that we're not allowing it. That's right. I think it's, yeah, more, more times than not, it's that. Excuse me. All right. I had one more question, but now I can't remember it. Oh, so just, I don't know if you would have the answer to this, but how do we stay or like, what advice would you have for people who are stepping into their power? Cause I, Um, how do I want to formulate it? It's like, how do we step into our power and stay open to receiving? Because sometimes when we step this, the visual of stepping into our power is that we're doing something, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's also like by being in our power, we allow ourselves to receive. So I don't know what comes up for you or what guidance would you have around that? Not to put you on the spot. (laughs) No, I mean, I think the, the main thing, okay. So how do we stay open? Mm -hmm. How do we go through, how do we step into our journey and, and also receive, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> support, support, support. Really, I mean, it's finding soul sisters. You know, finding soul family, people that get it, people that understand. Um, and then doing doing your work. You know the you know, you had asked me, do you journal? I'm like, not enough. Like that, you know, all of that stuff is super important. And, and Stacy's probably, if when she sees this, she's gonna be like, just <laughs> went through this journaling thing. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's, um, it is finding support and then doing the work, you know, you have to do your individual work, but having someone that you could bounce that off of, like yeah. where, you know, um, and whatever that looks like, right? I mean, it's a morning practice, a night practice, a midday practice, whatever it is, but you mm-hmm. have to be able to support yourself while stepping into your journey so that your heart can stay open and then mm-hmm. you can allow yourself to receive, you know? Mm-hmm. It's a balance, it's a fine dance and it's yes. really, really <laughs> hard to achieve. But once you, you, the main thing is staying conscious and present. You have to stay in that present space to be able to know, okay, I'm doing my work, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the journey. Mm-hmm. And here's something that's coming in for me to receive. And that's food for the soul so that I can continue to do the journey, right? So seeing right. receiving as food for the soul so that you can continue on. Absolutely. And I think through staying present with it, you are able to know when you're blocking it. Like that came up for me a few times recently where I was like, here it is knocking on my door. Sometimes like actually literally, knocking on the door. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not answering that. <laughs> no, I'm good. But thanks. I've already received, you know, at one point I was like, I've already received for today. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, Oh, that's interesting. Like what is like, but it's that upper limit. It's that ceiling that we all have. So interesting. But well, you know how you get really excited when Amazon packages come through, (laughs) like come to your door, receive like that. Like that's the way that you allow yourself to. That's a good tip. Yeah. Like when my new, like huge box of decks come in and I'm like, that's right. You're like, yeah, he's so excited. I'm receiving, I'm receiving. Okay. Same thing with energetic stuff and other yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. But unlike what I do with Amazon. So like with Amazon, you know how you can now track your package and it's like, it's 10 stops away. If it's eight stops away, like manifesting and being in that receiving mode, you can't track your package like that. <laughs> I know that's the only bad thing. See, this is what technology yeah. does to us. <laughs> yes, instant gratification, right? And like, like it gives us control or the illusion of control, right? And doesn't it makes that journey harder? Like even yeah. that something that simple, where it's like you're you click a button, it's right there on your doorstep. You want that journey, you want your journey to be the same, but it's not. It's right. not going to be that easy. I know. Yeah. Yeah. The universe is like you are on your journey because of this. Yes. <laughs> because, <laughs> that's oh right. man. Ah, uh, again, good times here on yeah. earth. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. To be continued. <laughs> All right. Well, so any, anything else that's coming up that you want to share or anything? Cause I do want you to share how we can work with you or, well, I know how to work with you, but how people can work with you and connect with you more. Cause you are in a lot of different places and you're doing a lot of amazing things that people need to. Yeah. Tune in. 
and see. Um, but any last guidance, feedback, words of encouragement, anything <laughs> that you want to offer? You know, just know that this is not easy, right? It's just not an easy journey, um, but it's a necessary journey. Mm -hmm. If you have said yes to the journey because you, you, you've listened to the calling, <laughs> don't be shy, you know, let it happen. Right. Find your support, seek people out, you know, use your intuition because sometimes you find people that are, that seem supportive, but they're really not. They're trying to just kind of gain something from you. Right. So, mm -hmm. but, but trust that intuition, give yourself grace. That is the biggest thing. You mm -hmm. know, we're so hard on ourselves to like, I'm not doing it right. I'm not, I haven't meditated enough. I haven't done this enough. And it's like, okay, that's okay. Maybe today you yeah. didn't, but get back on the horse tomorrow or next week or give yourself some rest. Even when you're resting, you're doing, when you say this, yes to this journey, even when you're sleeping on your couch because you just can't, you're doing something. Something's working in there. There's some mm -hmm. codes that are being downloaded. Something's happening. So integration. Give yourself grace. Yeah. Right. yeah, absolutely. And I love that because I think that's also a huge part of the feminine wounding and aspect of the shadow is that we are never doing enough because That's we're right. never going to get it because we can't we're never doing it perfect but that perfection is such an elusive yes like, it is you know it's undefined right because right. it's perfection <laughs> to you it's not perfection whatever that perfection out there is yeah absolutely amazing oh I love that and especially the point about grace mm -hmm. because I know that's something that time and time again we all need that reminder of grace yes right? yeah definitely. and it's kind of, yeah I don't want to say that's the whole point of the journey but it's a big part of the journey it is a big part of the journey you know if we're going through this journey and we're beating beating ourselves up all through it it's it's you're just yeah. going to continue to be in the journey forever forever I mean we're like I said always but it's going to be hard it's going to be drudge it's just going to feel like cement feet yeah. you know through yeah. this journey so oh absolutely awesome Okay. So how, how can we work with you? Where can we find you? I will drop all of these links down in the video description, but let them hear it from you. So they yeah. know. Oh so, yeah. I mean, I, I got so many damn links. I got to tone it down. That's another thing I have to do this year is like condense things, but um, you know, I, everything I do, I can do virtually. Um, even crystal dreaming, there isn't a, a, a modality. I mean, a way that I can do it uh, virtually. So you can always contact me at the number four whole heart healing at gmail.com or my website, the number four whole heart healing.com. Um, also I'm on Jessica Alejandro .com. I have a few free things there and a few things you can purchase. Um, and if you want to see what like crystal dreaming and stuff is, I have another website, Jessica Alejandro LMFT.com <laughs> with being a psychotherapist, you're going to kind of have to separate things, which is really annoying, but you know, it, it is, that's why I have so many freaking websites. <laughs> that's okay. Um, yeah. And we're going to make it easy for them. We can drop as many links as we need to down in the description or the show notes or the website, yeah. um, depending on where people are catching it. But well, thank you. Just thank you. This has been such a great way. We're recording this a week in advance. It's my Sunday morning and it has been the best part yeah. of my Sunday morning so far. Um, and I've had several cups of tea, which is usually the best part of my morning. But <laughs> thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for, for having me. Thank you. I love you so much. Thank you. I love you too. It's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> it's so mutual but um all right and so I want to thank you all for joining us and catching this video let us know what questions you have and how you're doing during Venus retrograde as it gets started it is a six week long retrograde we're going to end end of January so just go within do your inner work do your exploring find Jessica and I on social media and and yeah so much love all right, guys. Bye. Love you. Bye.